Bien, y ahora ya estamos aquí en otro sector del de, eh, piso para presentar eh, parte de lo que ha sido la conversación mano a mano con John Kassenbach, este autor eh, tan importante en términos editoriales también, ¿no? Eh, y en términos de lo que es el, el policial psicológico, el thriller psicológico, ¿no? El autor del psicoanalista que vino a presentar a la Feria del Libro El Club de los Psicópatas, este libro que estamos eh, aquí teniendo en la pantalla y que en una primera parte de la conversación habló sobre los lectores argentinos y sus altos niveles de exigencia y de conocimiento literario, de la Deep Web, que es un tema que se habla en el libro, y también de cómo creó el concepto del Club de los Psicópatas. Lo compartimos. Well, John, it's a great pleasure to speaking with you, interviewing you. La primera pregunta tiene que ver con cómo estás viviendo esta experiencia en Buenos Aires. Um, I love coming to Buenos Aires. Um, I, I, I have said before that it'd be nice if you could move Buenos Aires like up to where Mexico City is. It'd be a little more convenient. <laughs> um, but Uh, I, the, the people in Argentina that I meet up with are readers of, of terrific sophistication and understand depth of character, um, you know, intensity of plot, uh, and, and how a novel gets constructed better than um, many places in the world. Um, and so it's always a joy. To come visit here. Cuando uno piensa en un, un psicópata, piensa justamente en una persona. Acá vos hablas de un grupo, de un club de psicópatas. ¿Cómo nace ese concepto? And all authors, especially as thriller writers, love psychopaths. Uh, and um, we use them uh, with some frequency, um, like nearly 100% frequency. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and when I was sitting down um, and first starting to imagine this book, one of the things I wanted to do was to create something unique. I, and I could find very little um, um, in, in the literature of psychopathology um, that suggested a group like this, a club. Uh, and it's no different in a way from, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, or um, all the sort of self-help groups. And that was how I imagined um, Jack's boys, Los Muchachos de Jack. Uh, <laughs> and um, that, once I had that in place, um, it was then that I began to think about, okay, what are they doing? How are they feeding off each other the same way that any support group does, or even, you know, my wife's book group. <laughs> uh, and um, that was how I created both the five individuals. I think I, early in the book I described them like a basketball team. Utilizas el personaje de Jack el Destripador en la novela eh, y hablas de la deep web, de internet. Eh, ya que el destripador, más allá de ser un criminal, era una especie de fantasma en términos literarios. ¿Internet es una especie de fantasma también? Ah, uh, it's very well put. Um, it is. And it, what's interesting is that we're sitting here talking to reasonable people. Um, and yet there is this world electronically that is beyond our sight. Um, which is filled with um, nightmares. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we could sit down with a computer and, you know, it takes us about 30 seconds to find something that would turn our stomachs. Yeah. Um, and so, in a way, uh, one of the jobs as a novelist uh, is to explore these kinds of distinctions in our world. And that was one of the themes that I had um, in El Club de los Psicopatas. Um, the other is, you know, to tell a good story. Of course. That's yeah, the, yeah. the aim of, of it all. Ulti <laughs> ultimately, yeah. Because uh, otherwise it would just be a lecture. <laughs> um, uh, and 
you know, I, I've been asked before about, you know, about um, this book and, you know, the, the genesis of it. And, you know, it, it reminded me a little bit of, of all the times I said to my own children, don't do that. And then, of course, they did it. Of course. Uh, and so I simply took that a, to a, a, a larger level in this book. Mm -hmm. People do something they shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, there is also in the novel um, a sort of uh, image of what we cannot control in the deep web, in the crimes mm -hmm. in it that are always, you just have to open a newspaper to know that crimes are each day more uh, often through the deep web. Is it a, um, a dark alley internet for you? Good question. Uh, I guess really, I want to say no. Answer probably yes, <laughs> but I'm going to say no. Um, and. Um, Because ultimately, ultimately, um, the it, I think from a writer's writer's point of view that if you try to um, if you scour the you know um, the dark web looking for a character for a book, I think you'll just be sucked into uh, this vortex of evil, and you'll never get out. So in, in, in my case, I simply, I create the characters myself and then fit them into um, the technology. Bien, John Kassenbach, ¿no? Es este, interesante escucharlo, interesante haberlo entrevistado. Habla del proceso creativo ahora en esta segunda parte, ¿no? Entre otros de los puntos que hemos conversado. Una entrevista extensa que pudimos hacer este, eh, con un ámbito tranquilo para indagar en varios aspectos muy ricos que nos comentó y que compartimos ahora. Me gustaría preguntarte... ¿Cómo es tu proceso de escritura? ¿Sos un escritor metódico? ¿Sos un escritor que, como Cortázar, se inspira y escribe? ¿Cómo funciona? I kind of plan things out a little bit. Um, as I say, you know, when you know the ending, yeah. uh, you know, you're working backwards. Um, but within that scheme, uh, there are avenues that you can travel down, which is where the creativity comes. Uh, uh, suddenly it'll occur to me, well, wouldn't it be fun if I had uh, the character of Alpha do this um, or say that? Um, and, uh, or what about, you know, why should this character do, do something? And so your mind is constantly churning. But all this happens within the structure of, you know, that I know certain events in the book. I, I once had um, a wonderful writing teacher when I was young uh, in college who always said that when you sit down to write a novel, you know the important scenes. You know the confrontations where the good guy and the bad guy are going to face off. Uh, but it's really the scenes that lead up to those moments. Mm that make for a good novel. You know, what did the good guy have for breakfast? You know, did the bad guy have a toothache? You know, that, those moments, and if you can get those right, um, that's what creates the richness of prose and the depth of psychology in a story. A partir de lo que significa eh, una frase de, atribuida a Miguel Ángel que es eh, cuando le preguntaron cómo era la construcción de una obra, de una escultura, él decía, quito lo que sobra de la piedra. Bueno, ¿cómo es eso para vos? ¿Cuándo encontrás el momento en el cual determinás que ahí está terminada la novela? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. I've never been put in the same sentence with Michelangelo before. Uh, uh, and that feeds my ego terrifically. Uh, but... Uh, Uh, for me, at the, the reality is um, I know the ending before I write the first page. Okay. 
And in a couple of my books, I've actually known the last sentence of the book. Um, so I, in other words, and this means that as a author, each of the scenes, each of the characters, each, each of the moments in the book um, are working towards that last paragraph in the book. Uh, and so that it will have the impact on the reader that I want it to have. Um, I know there, there are some writers that say, oh, I, I just get this feeling that it's over, you know, and then put the pen down, I guess, or unplug the computer. Hmm. I don't really believe that. I mean, why would you go on a journey with someone who didn't know where they were going? Jorge Luis Borges, nuestro gran escritor, decía que las frustraciones, las humillaciones, los defectos, todo es una arcilla para la obra. ¿Cómo es eh, lo que viene después de este tránsito por Buenos Aires, por Chile, por Colombia, los próximos pasos de John Gassenbach como escritor? Next step um, is to return to um, uh, Ricky Starks, Dr. Starks in El Cico en Lista. Wow. Write the third um, of that uh, and bring it all to mm. an end. Wow. That's, uh, that's <laughs> a big stuff. It, it is. <laughs> big job. It is. It is. Um, um, the, I think that... Um, He's a character I really love, uh, and um, uh, I love putting him into troubles uh, <laughs> and seeing how he gets himself out. And that's what I'm working on now. Mm. It's been a big pleasure for us. Thank you oh, very much. Thank you. This has been great. Um, uh, I, the, I, I say this often when I get interviewed. Uh, It, that when you, when you come to Latin America, the questions are just a hundred times more sophisticated than they are in other parts of the world. <laughs> you know, I think it's because people down here love books and love literature uh, and love, uh, love the process of writing. Yeah. And it's just a treat for me to be here uh, and do this. Thank you once again. Thank you. Bien, privilegio ¿no? de haber charlado con John Kassenbach en una de las pocas entrevistas que dio eh, Biblioteca IP, tuvo oportunidad de conversar con él y realmente muy interesantes sus conceptos también sobre lo que significa el público argentino, su proceso creativo, eh, los detalles ¿no? de cómo se cuentan y cómo se eh, confeccionan estas historias tan exitosas. Después de la pausa, bueno, hay mucho. Viene Liniers, viene Ana Negri, vamos a hablar de Cristina Peri Rossi, vamos a hablar de lo que dejó la feria. Todo eso en Biblioteca. Quédate, ya volvemos.